Hello, my name is Brianna Stoddard, and this is an overview of the Salem Witch Trials. From the 15th to the 19th centuries, an estimated 50,000 people were executed for witchcraft in Europe alone. Witches were usually women accused of devil worship for supernatural powers. These women were either outspoken, economically independent, or estranged from their husbands. They did not follow normal generals sit down before them. They threatened what others considered God's will and the man's place in society and home. People accused of witchcraft were said to use the powers they obtained from the devil to harm others. Strong beliefs about supernatural interference from God and the devil were common, especially among the Puritans. In late 1691, at a place called Salem, Massachusetts, a group of young girls started having nightmares, visions, and suffering from fits of uncontrolled trembling and babbling. The local elders suspected witchcraft. It was found that Betty Paris, the daughter of Samuel Paris, the local Puritan pastor, and her cousin Abigail Williams, had been inviting friends over to listen to Paris's slave tell tales of voodoo. Tituba was a slave from the Caribbean islands with little standing in the community. The town believed that Tituba, along with two other women, were practicing witchcraft upon the girls. On February 29th, warrants were released for Tituba and the other two women. By March 7th, Tituba officially confessed her connection with the devil and started to accuse other women of having the same connection. Assistants of the Massachusetts General Court, John Hathorne and Jonathan Corwin, examined the accused women. Many of the examinations and trials of the accused Salem witches were held at Jonathan Corwin's house. The body of the accused women were searched for physical signs that the devil supposedly left behind. For one of the original three women, the unusual wart was found and said to be a witch's tit, where the devil or his familiars were to have sucked blood from the woman. The first six women to be proven witches by this method were executed. After this, more accusations came in against men and women of all ages. The youngest was a child of four. Some confessed and accused others to save themselves. Others firmly denied all connections to their deaths. In May of 1692, the new royal governor of Massachusetts, Sir William Phipps, arrived with the new Massachusetts Charter. Governor Phipps immediately started setting up courts to deal with the witch problem. By June 2nd, the special court of Oyer and Terminer was ready to convene with its new judges. Samuel Seawall, Bartholomew Genry, John Richards, William Sargent, Wait Winthrop, Nathaniel Sultan Stahl, later replaced by Jonathan Corwin, and presiding justice William Stoughton, Stoughton was appointed a high position even though he reportedly had very little legal background beforehand. On June 8, the court revived the law making witchcraft punishable by death. Bridget Bishop, a woman who had left an abusive marriage, was the first witch to die by hanging. July 15, Martha Carrier was accused of witchcraft after a male neighbor testified she shouted threatening words at him. The Puritans saw such language from a woman as a witch's curse. Hawthorne, imprisoned, then tricked two of Carrier's children into testifying against their mother. Even though the court reportedly abused all four of her children, Carrier never confessed to witchcraft. Other notable women accused then executed were Mary English, a wealthy and educated woman, Anna Putin, a woman with no money, Mary Warren, a maid, who was looking for marriage, and Rebecca Nurse, an elderly woman whose house 
still stands today. On September 22nd, the last of the 20 witches were executed. 15 of them were women and five of them were men. 19 people were hung and one man was pressed to death. The court was making the witch problem worse, not better. On the 29th of October, Governor Phipps dismissed the court of Oyer and Terminer. Few were sad to see the court dismissed. Many criticized the court and everything it did. Increased Mather, an important clergyman, was concerned the court was hurting or killing innocent people. He wrote cases of conscience concerning evil spirits and warned jurors not to take testimony of those who said they were possessed or con the confession and accusations of those facing death seriously. Tatuba claimed that after her confession that the pastor Paris had beaten her so she would confess. His son, Cotton Mather, agreed the court should not continue but defended the judges and the prosecutions. He wrote several pamphlets on using dreams and visions in the court, but also on the trials and proceedings themselves. The loss of 20 lives prompted people to look more for scientific explanations for natural events and to discredit people who are continuing to prosecute witches. In 1709 and 1711, Massachusetts General Court cleared the names of many of those accused of being witches and even awarded financial compensation to several families. Today, the trials are depicted in plays like The Crucible by Arthur Miller, TV shows, and in movies. Today's society is reminded of the cruelty done by ignorance. Thank you for watching and listening to an overview of the Salem Witch Trials.